Okay, in this demo, we are going to take a look at a small .NET application. This application is using the MongoDB.NET SDK to connect to the test MongoDB instance we created in the last demo. After the migration is done, I am going to change the connection string in this application to point to the Cosmos DB and we will confirm that the application still works. In the rest of the demo, we are going to go through some pre-migration steps. First, we provision a Cosmos DB MongoDB API instance. This instance will be the destination in our migration process. We also need to register the Microsoft Data Migration Provider in our subscription. Let's get started. So first, let's go ahead and take a look at the collection we want to migrate to Cosmos DB. I'm clicking on Sample Training Database. As you can see, there are all several collections in this database. Let's take a look at the company's collection. This collection has about 9,500 items in it and the size of the collection is 34.8 megabytes. Right click on the collection and open collection tab. So one of the pre-migration steps is to choose a partition key for our collection. Let's right click on one of the rows under document, click on view document JSON. And let's see if we can choose a field to be used as partition key. It is your responsibility to go ahead, examine your MongoDB collection and choose the best partition key for your collection in Cosmos DB. I am going to choose the founded year field as the partition key. Hopefully this partition key is going to divide my companies into same size logical partition. So before going ahead and performing the migration, let's go to Visual Studio and take a look at a small application which reads the items from the company's collection. After we do the migration, I am going to come back here and simply change the connection string to point to my Cosmos DB instance instead of the MongoDB instance and we confirm that the application still works. You can find this code in the module files so feel free to download and follow along. So the first thing I needed to do is right click on my project, manage NuGet packages and install MongoDB driver NuGet package. If you don't have it installed, you can simply click on the browse tab and install it from here. The first thing I need to do is include mongodb.driver into my code so I can go ahead and use it to interact with MongoDB. As you can see, I have done that. So let's put a breakpoint and start the application. So first, we need to create an instance of Mongo client object. To do so, you need to pass your MongoDB's connection string to this constructor. And as a reminder, to get the connection string, you can click on clusters, click on connect, click on connect your application, and grab the connection string from here. So let's run this step and looks like it worked. In the next step, you need to get a reference to the database you're willing to work with. And as you can see, the name of the database is sample training. We can confirm that by going back to Studio 3T and confirm the name of the database. And since we are here, let's remember the name of the collection as well, which is companies. So let's run this step. And in the next step, I'm going to get a reference to the company's collection within my sample training database. And here, you can go ahead and do many things with this collection reference. For example, you can run a find query and put a condition there to get some records back. You can also update and delete existing records. So as you can see, here I'm searching for companies which their founded year is greater than 2000. And I'm only taking the first 100 items. So let's run that. So it looks like we have some data back. If I hover over my companies, you can see that I have a collection with 100 items. So let's click on that and examine one of the items. So I've got founded year, homepage URL, ID, and name fields. But if you remember, my collection had so many other fields. So if I right click, document, and view JSON, you can see that my collection is not only limited to the four fields I selected. I have only done that for the purpose of simplicity. So this demo will be easy to follow. You can always go ahead and fetch more fields. But to do so, you need to make sure the object you are creating has the fields you want to fetch. So let's click on the company object, F12, and take a look at the fields here. So here I have defined an object which will be mapped to the MongoDB collection item. As you can see, it has an ID field which maps to the object ID field in the MongoDB. I also decorated my class with an attribute called Bison Ignore External Element. If you don't put that attribute up there, you need to replicate the exact amount of fields and nested objects you have in your MongoDB collection item. Otherwise, you get a runtime exception. So let's go back to my program. And as you can see, here I have an array of this company object I created. And the rest is simple. 
In a loop, I am printing the name and the foundation year of the company into the console. So let's go ahead and run that. And as you can see, I have all the companies being printed out. So in the rest of the demo, we are going to migrate this collection to Cosmos DB. Then come back to this application and make sure by changing a connection string to Cosmos DB, we can have a working application. Let's get started. So I am logged in to the Azure portal. The first thing we need to do now is to go ahead and provision an instance of Azure Cosmos DB MongoDB API. Let's click on Azure Cosmos DB, click on add, and let's go ahead and provision our instance. I am going to put this instance in a resource group which I created before. So let's choose MongoDB demo. For the account name, I am going to choose Reza account Mongo01, and I'm going to choose Azure Cosmos DB for MongoDB API as the API option. And for the location, I am going to choose East US. And I'm going to leave geo redundancy and multi region rights disabled. Next, we are not touching networks or any other defaults. So let's click on Review plus Create and click on Create. And let's just wait for our Cosmos DB instance to get provisioned. OK, after about six minutes, my Azure Cosmos DB is provisioned. So let's click on Go to Resource and take a look. Let's click on Data Explorer. And as you can see, I don't have any databases or collections in my instance yet. So now that we have our empty Cosmos DB ready, we can go ahead and migrate our collection from MongoDB Atlas. So for this small migration, I could go ahead and use the same application we used in the last modules demo. Simply download the application, install it on a machine and run a migration. However, there is a more sophisticated and enterprise level option which you can use to migrate data in Azure. And I'm going to use that service for the purpose of this demo. The service is called DMS or Azure Data Migration Service. But before being able to use DMS or Data Migration Service to migrate our data, there is a one-time step we need to follow. Let's click on All Services and search for Subscriptions and click on Our Subscription. Scroll down and click on Resource Providers under Settings and search for migration. So before being able to use Azure Data Migration Service in your subscription, you need to confirm that Microsoft dot Data Migration Provider is registered for your subscription. And as you can see, I have already registered it. You might need to go ahead and register it yourself. So if I delete the search migration and scroll down, you can see I have a few unregistered service, which I can simply click on and register. So after clearing that, Let's go ahead and create our migration service.